Good morning. So good to see everybody here today. Thank you so much for coming. And for those that are watching us on Facebook, thank you for inviting us into your home. And if you don't mind liking and sharing that information so that we can reach other folks. If you look in the few in front of you this morning, you'll find a connect card for our regular members. If you'll just put your name on it and pass it to the outer aisles. And those that are visiting with us today, thank you so much. You are our honored guest. And if you would put in detail for us so that we can send you a little correspondence, we'd appreciate that. Thank you again for coming. Uh, we have a new list of Bible classes that are going to be starting in the month of August, if you'll consider that, and coming to classes. And then we're going to continue with our summer series this next Wednesday evening. Colton's going to come and bring us a lesson on the book of Daniel. We look forward to his lesson. So now, if you would, let's all stand together and let's sing. These are the days of Elijah, declaring the word of the Lord. And these are the days of your servant Moses, righteousness being restored. And though these are days of great trials, of famine and darkness and sword, still we are the voice in the desert, crying, prepare ye the way of the Lord. Behold, he comes, riding on the clouds, shining like the sun, at the trumpet call, so lift your voice. It's the year of Jubilee, and out of Zion's hill salvation comes. These are the days of Ezekiel, the dry bones becoming as flesh. And these are the days of your servant, David rebuilding a temple of praise. And these are the days of the harvest. The fields are as wide in your world. And we are the laborers in your vineyard, declaring the word of the Lord. Behold, he comes. Riding on the clouds, shining like the sun, at the trumpet call, so lift your voice. It's the year of jubilee, and out of Zion's hill salvation comes. Be seated. From Psalm 40, I waited patiently for the Lord. He turned to me and heard my cry. He lifted me out of the slimy pit, out of the mud and mire. He set my feet on a rock and gave me a firm place to stand. He put a new song in my mouth, a hymn of praise to our God. Many will see and fear the Lord and put their trust in him. Let's pray. Holy Father, we praise your name, the name that is above every name in heaven and earth. Father, you are good, you are all wise, you are eternal, you are unchangeable, you are creator of everything. You are faithful, you are just, you are gracious, you are perfect in all your ways. You are all powerful, you are our provider, you are merciful, and you are love. Father, we praise you for all the blessings that you have so graciously showered upon us as your children. We pray that we will never become blinded by the evil one by taking these blessings for granted. 
Father, we pray for peace for our nation. We see all of the seeds of discord and acts of violence and turmoil that are ever present. Father, we pray for wisdom. Father, may our eyes always be on you and you alone. We have prayed especially for all those in our state that are suffering tremendous hardship and loss of life, loved ones, because of the recent floods. Be with us as we seek to assist them in their time of need. Be with those of our number that are dealing with COVID or other illnesses. We pray your healing and blessings on them. Father, help us to confess our sins to you. We know that you are faithful and just and will forgive our sins as we confess them. We pray, we pray our blessings, your, bless, your blessings on Steve this morning. Give him strength. Give him a clear recollection of all he's prepared to say to us. And be with us in just a moment as we prepare our minds to partake of the Lord's Supper together. Father, we ask it all in the beautiful name of Jesus, our Savior and King. Amen. This will be our song before the Lord's Supper this morning. How deep the Father's love. How deep the Father's love for us. How vast beyond all measure. That he should give his only son to make a wretch his treasure how great the pain of searing loss the father turns his face away as wounds which mark the chosen one bring many sons to glory behold the man upon the cross my sin upon his shoulders ashamed I hear my mocking voice call out among the scoffers it was my sin that held him there until it was accomplished his dying breath has brought me life i know that it is finished i will not boast in anything no gifts no power no wisdom but i will boast in jesus christ his death and resurrection why should I gain from his reward? I cannot give an answer. But this I know with all my heart. His wounds have paid my ransom. At this time, we honor God and thank him for his blessed son, Jesus, that he sent to this earth to die for our sins.
that we might have opportunity for eternal life. Heavenly Father, thank you so much for this day. Thank you for the blessings of life. Thank you for your blessed Son, Jesus. And we pray, Father, that we might partake of this bread that represents the body of Christ in a manner that would be pleasing to you. In Christ's name, amen. In like manner, Heavenly Father, we thank you for this fruit of the vine, which represents the blood that Christ shed on the cross for our sins. We pray, Father, that you, that we might do it in a manner that would be acceptable to you. In Christ's name we pray, amen. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for blessing our lives so abundantly, and we pray, Father, that we can return to you in a manner that would be expected. In Christ's name, amen.
The reading this morning will be taken from 1 Samuel chapter 17, verses 54 through 58. David took the Philistine's head and brought it to Jerusalem. He put the Philistine's weapon in his own tent. As Saul watched David going out to meet the Philistine, he said to Abner, commander of the army, Abner, whose son is that young man? Abner replied, as surely as you live, your majesty, I don't know. The king said, find out whose son this young man is. As soon as David returned from killing the Philistine, Abner took him and brought him before Saul, with David still holding the Philistine's head. Whose son are you, young man? Saul asked him. David said, I am the son of your servant Jesse of Bethlehem. Unto thee, O Lord, do I lift up my soul. Unto thee, O Lord, do I lift up my soul. O my God, I trust in thee. Let me not be ashamed, let not my enemies triumph over me yea let none that way on me be ashamed yea let none that way on thee be ashamed oh my god i trust in thee Let me not be ashamed, let not my enemies triumph over me. Remember not the sins of my youth. Remember not the sins of my youth. Oh my God. I trust in thee, let me not be ashamed, let not my enemies triumph over me. I'm pressing on the upward way, new heights I'm gaining every day. Still praying as I onward bound, Lord, plant my feet on higher ground. Lord, lift me up and let me stand by faith on heaven's table land. A higher plane that I have found. Lord, plant my feet on higher ground. I want to scale the utmost height and catch a gleam of glory bright. But still I'll pray till heaven I found. Lord, lead me on to higher ground. Lord, lift me up and let me stand by faith on heaven's table land. A higher plane than I have found. Lord, plant my feet on higher ground. If you wouldn't mind, stand up for this last song, and then we'll welcome Steve this morning. In heavenly armor we'll enter the land, the battle belongs to the Lord. No weapon that's fashioned against us will stand, the battle belongs to the Lord. And we sing glory, honor, power and strength to the Lord. And we sing glory, honor, power and strength to the Lord. When the power of darkness comes in like a flood, 
The battle belongs to the Lord. He's raised up a standard, the power of his blood. The battle belongs to the Lord. And we sing glory, honor, power, and strength to the Lord. And we sing glory, honor, power, and strength to the Lord. When your enemy presses in hard, do not fear. The battle belongs to the Lord. Take courage, my friend, your redemption is near. The battle belongs to the Lord. And we sing glory, honor, power, and strength to the Lord. And we sing glory, honor, power, and strength to the Lord. When I took announcement making at Lipscomb at 101 class, I didn't do well in that, and that's why I decided to lead singing or preach or do something that I think making announcements is some of the hardest things we do here because people will ask me to announce something, and I forget it all the time, and I don't mean to, but I forgot a couple announcements this morning, and we'll begin by telling you that there will be a Ladies' Day planning meeting at 2 p.m. in the room next to the library. And then also, I'm, we're happy to report that Keith Pettit's mom is home after receiving a pacemaker and i wanted to get those things across this morning before we got into our lesson hey before we get started good i, I wish you'd you sing one more song with eli let's let's all stand and i want to sing about a little boy david okay let's all stand together ready steve, steve requested one verse the little boy david uh i think i've got the words right and just sing along with me it goes like this uh, there once was a little boy David, once was a babbling brook. There once was a little boy David, five little stones he took. One little stone went in the sling, and the sling went round and round. Round and round and round and round and round and round and round. And round, and round. One little stone went up, 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 and the giant, the giant came tumbling down. All right. We did that with no practice music. All right. Good job. I'm sorry Brentley wasn't here today because he loves that song, and I heard that he was sick today and, and couldn't come, and I'm so disappointed because I really wanted to sing that for him because he just loves Vacation Bible School songs, and I do too. It has a lot to do with today's lesson, and I want us to talk about that a little bit. So as we begin today, I want us to talk about something that happened in 1 Samuel chapter 13. It is where uh, Saul was introduced to the Philistine army. Saul had just been made uh, anointed king. He started out with a, a band of soldiers that were about 3,000. But you know what happened? They didn't have any weapons. And the reason they didn't have any weapons is because the Philistines took all the blacksmiths out of his territory. And, and they couldn't even make farm implements because they were so afraid they were going to turn them into weapons. So he loses his army of about 3,000 down to about 600. And if you look at this terrain, this is actually a, a picture of Michmash. So to your left at the very top is where the Philistine army was. They had so many armies, uh, soldiers that, that they couldn't be counted. And most of them uh, had uh, chariots and horses. So if you look to your right at the very top, that's where Saul's army was. Saul uh, was afraid of the Philistine army. And the Bible tells us that he was located under a pomegranate pomegranate tree <laughs> sort of take it easy wondering what he was going to do about this big army that had surrounded him his son Jonathan though climbed the cliffs and the Bible tells us that this cliff had sharp rocky edges as which you can see and also was composed of thorns now you think about him and his armor barrier cat climbing that cliff to surprise the Philistine army because they thought surely nobody will come up on this side, right? So Jonathan does this, and when he gets up there, the Bible tells us that he killed about 20 men 
in about half of an acre. Now, the new house where uh, Janet and I are living, this lot is close to a half acre. So he, he killed about 20 men. When that happened, the Philistine army panicked. When they panicked, God caused a greater panic to come. And, and, and they were so confused about things that they killed each other. When Saul sees this, then he and his men chased after the Philistines and defeated them that day. So then that brings us up to sort of where we are this morning. 27 years later, the Philistines were ready to battle again. And this time they weren't going to make the mistakes that they'd made before. They got a champion. And the word champion literally means a man <laughs> that went between two spaces. And he did. And if you, if you open your Bibles this morning to 1 Samuel chapter 17, we're going to look at the story of David. So here they have this champion. This champion's name is Goliath. Now, Goliath means strong. And they were both camped at an area called Shaco. Now, it's not spelled like we spell Shaco. If you want some bonus points, I would ask you how to spell Shaco this morning. <laughs> but, but that would, uh, you know, I don't know if you know how to spell Shaco or not, but it's S-C-H-O-C-H-O-H. So that, that tells you how to do it. But they were at an area, and it's not near a Daryville, and it's not at the edge of Simpson County in the beginning of Logan County. Shaco was actually located in the center of this picture. And so the Philistines come, and there on that hill to your left, Saul and his army were on the hill to your right. And a babbling brook sort of made its way down the valley of Elah there. And it was sort of what we would know today as a wet weather spring or... Um, it's a place where uh, it was a watershed. I mean, water had to go somewhere. And in the beautiful valley that you see there, it was good for raising crops. And, and where the Philistines were was a place called Ephes Damon, which means a boundary of blood. And it was said that the soil was extremely red there. And it wasn't from battle, but, you know, tradition said it was because they fought over this land all the time. But that's sort of where they were. And all of a sudden, this champion comes out, and he stands before God's people. And if you looked at the little interpretation of the Hebrew text there, it means that he came out every day and he shook himself. Now, wouldn't you like to be that big and bad sometime that you could just come out and shake yourself and people would be so afraid of you that they would run? Well, that's literally what would happen. And he would come out and he would challenge them. And the Bible tells us that he did this for 40 days twice a day. He would come out and say, hey, let's fight. You send me your best. And if you win, we'll bow down and worship you. And if I win, you bow down and you worship me. The Bible gives more description of, of Goliath than any other character in Scripture. It talks about all the bronze that he wore. Now, bronze is composed of uh, tin and copper. And, and he wore this, this vest that was made of that. Um, all of his defensive weapons were made of bronze. His offensive weapons were made of iron. Now, can you imagine go, leaving your home this morning and going and seeing your neighbor, and your neighbor's nine feet tall, he's wearing a 125-pound backpack, and he has a 66-pound New York Yankees hat on. Well, that's sort of... <laughs> I mean, we laugh at that a little bit, but that's sort of what we see here. So he has a, bra a bronze javelin, and on the end of a javelin, it weighed 15 pounds. Now, if you want to know uh, how much 15 pounds is, you can go to Walmart, and you can go to the bakery aisle, and you can get 15 pounds of sugar. Just sort of pick that up and hold it in your right hand, 
and see how heavy 15 pounds is. This guy was massive. And, and he thought of himself as being invincible. And you know what? God's people thought the same thing. They agreed with him. And so for 40 days, he would come out, and he would literally shake himself, and he would scare himself in front of God's people. And then in verse 17, what we have to remember when we read the book of Samuel, the book of Samuel is narrative literature. And so the writer of this book will introduce us to characters along. And in verse 17, he, his, his in, intent in this chapter is to bring out remarkable chain of circumstances by which David was led to take care of this guy. So notice the details. For 40 days, this guy came out. He took his stand. So Saul, I mean, David's father, Jesse, had dispatched David to take food to his brothers. The writer very specifically tells us that his dad was too old to fight and David was too young to fight. But he had three brothers. He had others, but three that are mentioned by name that were warriors and was ready to fight for Saul. So he came out. As usual, he uttered his defiance. And the Bible tells us that when he did this, everybody ran, including David, because he's part of this everybody here. The first time he saw him, he ran from him. And then if we take our Bibles and we begin looking um, at... Uh, Verse 26, he says, What will be done for the man who kills this Philistine and removes this disgrace from Israel? Who is this uncircumcised Philistine that he should defy the armies of the living God? And so they told him three things are going to happen. You'll be relieved of your taxes. Uh, you'll be given great riches and also the opportunity to marry his daughter. Three things will happen if you do that. And so he says, don't lose heart. I'll fight him. And everybody's going, what? Can you, can you not see the look on everybody's face? Here this unseasoned young man, probably a teenager, is standing before a guy that's a head taller than any of the other Israelites. Not as, he's not nine feet tall, but, he, but he's, he's almost as tall as this area right here. So Saul wasn't a short guy by any means. And, and so, you know, here's David, a teenager, saying, well, you know what? When I'm out tending sheep and a bear or a lion steals something that belongs to me, I go and retrieve it out of their mouth and grab them by the hair. <laughs> Can you imagine grabbing a lion by the hair and removing a sheep from it to rescue it and then taking that life of that lion and that bear? Well, that's what David said he did. And he said, because of this, God will be with me. God will be with me and will rescue me from the hand of this Philistine. So then, Saul says, well, here, let me give you the stuff to fight with. So they dress him up. And can you imagine how heavy that would be to a man that wasn't seasoned? And David says, you know what, I can't use this. This is not good for me. I'm going to use what I'm used to. And he grabs him st his staff, and he goes down to that brook, and he gets five smooth stones. And now he's ready to take on this giant. And he does. And so he goes to him, and, and Goliath says, Am I a dog that you come to me with sticks? I'll give your flesh to the birds and the wild animals. And David said to this guy, You come against me with sword and spear and javelin, but I come against you in the name of the Lord Almighty and the God of the armies of Israel, whom you have defiled. And notice what the Bible tells us next. You know, earlier when he first saw Goliath, they all run. They run away from him, right? Now, the Bible tells us when he approached Goliath and Goliath approached him, he ran toward him. 
And he did. He takes a smooth stone out and he puts it in his sling. And it goes what? And where does it go? And where does it hit him? And who falls down? Y'all made 100%. Awesome. He falls down. And this is what I want you to get next. In verse 54, after the giant fell, David ran to him and he stood over him. And he took Goliath's sword and he cut off his head. And look at verse 54 with me. David took the Philistine's head and brought it to Jerusalem. I want you to see this. He brought it to Jerusalem. Again, this is narrative literature. Jerusalem didn't exist yet. Joab hadn't given it to David. It was a Jebusite fortress. It was fortified. I believe that David took this to that fortified city, which would soon be known as the city of David, Mount Zion, Jerusalem. I don't know what he did with it. I don't know if he took the skull of Goliath and put it on a stick and left it outside the city or whether he buried it. The Bible doesn't tell us. I sort of wish I knew. But he left that skull there. And what I want us to get from that this morning is this. When our Lord was led to be crucified, he was led outside the city. And Matthew tells us that they took him to the place called the skull. Or Golgotha. Do you hear Goliath of Gath in Golgotha? So what I want us to see is our Lord went to the skull so that we could face any giant that comes our way. Amen. I mean, that's, that's the point of this lesson. The point of Old Testament Scripture is to point us to Jesus Christ. And I believe this Scripture points us right there. I believe we can see him. You know, there are giants that come and defeat us again and again, and oftentimes the giants defeat us because we try to use our own strength. And when we try to use our own strength to defeat the giants most of the time we lose that's just the way that is and the bible tells us in ephesians chapter 6 to be strong in the lord and the power of his might we cannot defeat the giants of this world with our own strength we can only do it through god's strength so i don't know what our problem is right now if we have giants in our lives but i believe the first thing we need to do is pray about it if something's troubling you today, pray about it. Turn your worries into prayers. Turn your fears into prayers. Turn your problems into prayers. Pray about this. Don't worry, the Bible tells us. Instead, pray about everything. So if you're facing a giant today, pray about this. And I believe he will help you experience God's peace. So, are we facing any giants today? How do your giants compare with Goliath? You know, with, without question, he's, he's probably the most fierce-looking, trash-talking, massive-killing. He was a bad machine that struck terror not only on God's people, but all his opponents. So... Have you faced any giants today? And I'm not talking about the natural giant of Goliath. 
But let me ask some questions. Is living from paycheck to paycheck your giant? Is it a giant in your life? Is being underemployed or, or unemployed a giant in your life? Do you have someone that you love that's addicted to drug or booze? Is that a giant in your life? You know, school's going to open pretty soon. Are you afraid of a bully at school? Is that a giant in your life? How are you dealing with your giant? Do we make a typical response? You know what David's first response was when he saw the giant? He ran. Is that what we do? Do we run? He ran out of fear. Do we run from giants out of fear? Well, this morning, I would like for us to close with some key points on how to deal with giant. Number one, show up for battle ready to fight. You know, we don't always get to pick the time and place where the giant comes. Oftentimes, we got to face the giant. We don't know he's there. But be ready. Be ready to fight. Sometimes you've just got to fight. In 1 Samuel chapter 17, David said to Saul, Your servant has been keeping his father's sheep, and when a lion or bear came and carried off a sheep from the flock, I went after it. I struck it. I rescued the sheep from its mouth, and when it turned on me, I seized it by its hair, and I struck it, and I killed it. Are you ready to fight? You know, David didn't just defeat the lion and the bear. The scripture says he went after it because they stole something that belonged to him. And being a good shepherd that he was, he got it back. And then, don't run from the battle. Did it surprise you that, to find out that he ran first before he ran at him? It did me. It sort of caught me off guard when I was looking at that this week. It sort of surprised me, but he did. And it does it surprise you that that's what we want to do first sometime? That we want to run from this? You know, it's awful easy for us to be, you know, critical, but when giants come our way, sometimes we just run from it. We think, well, maybe it'll go away. Maybe it'll lessen the intensity of the battle because I know I got to fight. Maybe if I just run from it, the battle won't be as hard because I might be in better shape than the giant, right? Wrong. No. No, don't run from the battle. Ignoring the problem won't make it go away. Don't do it. And then, don't be afraid. If you're facing difficult times, which just seems, you know, impossible, whether it's financial or whether it's other opportunities that are attacking you like attacks of the enemy, just take comfort in knowing, you know, God's going to be in a foxhole with you. He's going to help you. He's going to give you the strength. He's, he's going to be by your side. There's no reason to fear or, or, or doubt the outcome. He, he's going to help you, so, so don't be afraid. And then don't worry, what, don't worry about what other people might think. You know, in the final analysis, nobody can, nobody can fight your battles. Nobody's going to take your place on Judgment Day. You and you alone are going to be accountable for the things that you do or things that you don't do. And while there may be a shortage of money, while there may be a shortage of opportunities, while courage may not be there or wisdom, but there's one area that will never experience a shortage, and that's the opinion of others. <laughs> you know, you can just get all kinds of opinions, right? Don't worry about what other people think. In 1 Samuel 17, you know, David's brothers are really fussing at him. You know, you're just a young boy. Why are you here? And David says, what have I done? I, man, I'm only asking a question. Don't worry too much about what other people think. David was the one that ran toward the giant. And then you choose your weapon. Did you notice what David did? He tried to use what the king supplied him. It didn't work for him. David used what he was used to. Find something that will work for you. 
And then understand the rewards of winning. He asked, what, what will the guy receive who kills this guy? And they told him, hey, you're going to receive three things. Riches, money, riches, the king's daughter, and you don't have to pay taxes. Man, I'd like to not have to pay taxes, wouldn't you? Wouldn't that be awesome? Well, those three things were going to be handed him. Hey, when you, when you understand the, the rewards of winning, it's so much easier to go battle the giant that's in your way. Just understand there is a reward for winning. I want to close today by looking at some scriptures to help us uh, to be encouraged to fight our giants. The first one is found in Joshua. Have I not commanded you, be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid, do not be discouraged, for the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. And then, I love this one, from Psalm 27. We read that this morning in our Sunday school class. Verse 1, The Lord is my life and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? Let's look at some more from Isaiah chapter 41, verse 10. So do not fear, for I am with you. Do not be dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you and I will help you. I will uphold you with all my righteous hand. I like a parallel passage that's found in the New Testament in Romans chapter 8, verse 11. If the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he who raised Christ Jesus from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies through his spirit who dwells in you. And then finally, I love this one. From 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verses 8 and 9. We're pressed hard on every side, but not crushed. Perplexed, but not in despair. Persecuted, but not abandoned. Struck down, but not destroyed. Is there a giant in the way this morning that would keep you from obeying the gospel of Jesus Christ? Is there a giant this morning that would keep you from saying, Lord, I'm sorry, I haven't been living the way I need to live and I need to repent? Is there a giant that's keeping you from doing that? Is there a giant in your midst this morning that's keeping you from having joy and fellowship one with another? Let us help you get rid of this giant. Our blessed Lord and Savior Jesus Christ provides avenue to where we can whip this guy every time. Please come while we stand and sing. Stand up, stand up for Jesus, ye soldiers of the cross. Lift high his royal banner, it must not suffer loss. From victory unto victory, his army shall he lead. Till every foe is vanquished, and Christ is Lord indeed. Stand up, stand up for Jesus, the strife will not be long. This day the noise of battle, the next the victor's song. To him that overcometh a crown of life shall be. He with the King of glory shall reign eternally. Let's pray. Our dear Heavenly Father, we are indeed thankful for another Lord's Day that you've blessed us with. We thank you, Father, for this time that we've had this morning to assemble here to study another portion of your word.
to sing praises to thee and gather around your table. Father, we ask that you would be with us now as we depart, that we might take everything that we've learned this morning and might apply it to our lives to be better of service to you. Pray that you keep us all safe and keep us healthy and forgive us of our many sins. For it is in Christ's name we pray. Amen. <laughs>